What is this? Joystick? May I control it? Oh, this is your captain speaking. This was from the beginning. So I can spend 11 moves to get my worm to maybe whatever this fun fancy thing is after you. I push the other thing in, but I can't reach. I need 11 moves to get to that star. And the distance is 1, 12. It's 12. I don't know, but if I back out, maybe my goal is incomplete. If I can find more T's, maybe I can make that last step. What a tease. So I was watching the recording back and noticed something. This tan worm that I'm controlling resembles the areas that we just went through. And the blue worm resembles the areas I went through in the previous video. So are these the overworlds that I'm pushing around? Oh, yes, they are. Because look, the room's orientation has changed. Let me mess with it a bit more. If I were to face down, what would that do? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So we're controlling the giant spaceships. And what's even more, there's this little, barely noticeable worm positioned right above me? Possibly a new world? It looks like I've connected a bridge to it. I want to see if something happens. And I also wonder if it's actually possible for me to go back to the blue world now that I've pushed it into the wormhole thing. Oh, I can see my mini-maps change too. So now this is... Well, it wants to go somewhere, but it doesn't quite connect. How do I link up with that weird thing up there? What if I over... Oh, I can reveal more of it now. Still doesn't reveal a bridge. You can see a little further of it. That's still not enough. If I can reveal more about the other worm, maybe I can reveal more about the blue worm. Aha! Duh. You just extrapolate a little. Well, now I can go see what the big fuss is about. And a new way in. Oh, this is so clever. So this might have been the first real overworld puzzle, but I'm sure there's many to come. Actually, if I go this way, I bet this is the head of the ship. Yeah, and it's got his own joystick. Oh. And each symbol translates to a move, so I should get the maximum amount of symbols to get the maximum amount of moves. That means I got more puzzles to solve. So is this going to introduce, yeah, multiple worms? Oh, this seems tough. I only have to horizontally flip it, but this seems really tough. Like, I can't rotate here. But if I push it over one, maybe then I can rotate it. Okay, a little progress. Then I can rotate it right into the water. Great. Well, if I back up, I at least got to get it to be in the middle. Yeah, how's that going to work? Well, if it flips now, I suppose it could work. Does that even make sense? I've got some bizarre ideas here. Hold on. It might even involve a reset. Here, here's what I'm thinking about, okay? So there's all these cube boxes, okay? And the cube boxes fit perfectly into this worm's gap. Like there's, there's exactly a one cube gap here. So I'm wondering how possible it is to actually get the ringed worm to ring around that gap. I don't know, maybe. I may need to start by flipping it. And then maybe what I could do is back it up against this box, right? But then I can only flip in that direction. I can't flip the other way. Well, if I push it down one, I can vertically flip here. And then horizontally flip for the hell of it. But that doesn't help me yet. In fact, this actually stuck at that point. Because you almost have to think about how this thing flips, where the hole in the middle moves. The hole here moves over two squares. As you can see here, two squares separation, I guess three squares apart. So the hole would be here, then it would be here, then it would be here, then it would be here, working backwards, of course. That also means every time it flips, you have to reverse the orientation from here. So all this means that if I want to have the worm in the correct orientation in the beginning, it has to, and I mean has to, be flipped horizontally once and vertically once. But I don't know how to flip it vertically, actually. Because when I try to flip it vertically, it leaves me stuck. Worm cannot be rescued from here. I am simply too short. Oh, I have an idea. If I back it up against this cube, I can then flip it vertically. So I can set it up right here so that when it flips, it circles the cube, which is all I wanted. And now, how do I get further? Well, so I can grab onto either one of these now. Oh, that's how. I can grab onto either end, and honestly, that might be all of that I need. 
They get a fat W. Come on. There we go. There we go. That was tricky. But hey, that's what you'd expect from a later game puzzle. This isn't even late game. It's just late game within the blue area. What the heck is this puzzle? I gotta get two worms in their holes. One of them needs to be flipped somehow. Unless if I'm supposed to fit in there, can I? No, I figured not. You're telling me I can flip this vertically? Which would require socking it? What do I use as a stop? Myself? Okay, hear me out, right? So if I walk here and then come around, then try to sock it, lacking the space. Oh, I kind of get it though. Like what if I hug it like this and then sock it? Yeah, that makes a bit more sense. Now, once I've fully socked it, oh, I can flip it like this. I kind of get why. Well, that doesn't help me flip it vertically though, which is what I need. The other issue with socking it is that if I try to unsock it, I instantly fall. So I got to go back to before socking. And in a similar vein, what maneuvers do I actually have? Oh, I don't think I can actually sock this one. Just a little too short for it. Unless if there's some other sneaky way. This doesn't look like it work. No, it does work. Whoa, look at me rotate. That's cool. So I can like super swallow it and then still have some room left over. I feel like that's pretty important to actually getting the forelong to its goal. I just need to be facing the other direction. Because it actually looks like the gaps are too short for it otherwise. But this doesn't help with the vertical flip. At least I've been able to set it up the other direction. I still have absolutely no idea... I could flip the other one vertically. At least I know I can get that there, but that doesn't solve the whole puzzle. What I'm trying to examine right now is the underlying idea behind flipping. When trying to flip, what's determined is the combination of you as the snake as well as the thing you're trying to eat. So I can flip to the side here because my mouth is facing perpendicular to the direction that I'm flipping and there is no part of me or the thing I'm socking to the right to restrict my movement to the right. So I was thinking that if I set up myself inside the worm and then set up this, would it be possible to roll myself down? The answer is no, because I back out. But what about now? Could I roll myself down? No, because the rolling seems to happen from the mouth. What I have to ask myself then, is it possible to fully sock this and then also partially sock the smaller one? The answer to that is no, but I feel that I have to sock the small one in order to flip the large one. Because look at what happens when I've just socked the small one, but my overall shape is really weird. It still flips like this, right? So imagine if I were somehow also holding the large shape. The issue is, it's not really possible to sock that now either. And I think I would have to do it in the other order. You know, I just realized something. This whole time, you don't have to flip the big fucking snake vertically. Because you have to flip it horizontally. Which is like one of the first things that I did. This, thankfully, makes it like a thousand times easier. Because I've actually assembled every piece of the puzzle now. I just need to lodge the small piece in. Properly sock it. Um, then I figure, gotta figure out how to get this other piece out of the way. That part's the hard part. Yeah, that's good enough. Because now it can roll over here perfectly fine. Knock it in. And this I can self-sock. As in, this is the only setup I need. Just get it so the tail is straight. Back up. Roll over. It's the same shape, and somehow it alluded me that it was the same shape. Clearly, it was two different shapes in my brain. Puzzle solved. Well, at least I learned a lot while doing it. That's the silver lining. This wasn't the door I couldn't open, was it? It was not, and there's still puzzles to do in here. Because I definitely don't recognize this one. All I gotta do is become length three and make it into that goal. Well, how hard can it be? Surely, I don't just eat the <laughs> closest one. And then carry on. What is interesting is that when I eat, it grows from the tail. So somehow I may need to block the tail. Or realistically, I may need to try for some very strange interactions. Because I mean, I can sock this guy. But what if I sock it, move it up a little? And then mess around with this orientation? 
I don't know what I can do with that, but I do know one other thing I could try is backing into this dot and then turning around and eating it. Well, I mean, what does that accomplish? It's the same old, same old. There's gotta be a way to do something, anything. I feel like pushing that, that dot down is important because I can't really do much with this guy except to bring him out here. Well, I guess one thing I can do with the worm here is sock him from the other side, which means that I can push him over here and then over. And if I sock these now, they become bridges. That might actually just be the puzzle because now I can push this over, eat this normally and get into the goal. Cool. And then here's that same giant door from the other side. How do I actually activate this puzzle though? I don't see where that could be done. Even from a top-down view, I've got nothing. Maybe I have to open the door first because I think I have enough now. I know I have enough. Anything interesting here? Not really. How do I begin this puzzle? Do I just yeet my rings in and hope so it snags on something? I could spam these if I wanted to. Do you think it's possible to reach from this puzzle? Truly not. No, I, I doubt this will work. I have dreams of like being able to bridge all and I mean all the way to the left and then just going that way. I don't think that'd work. Like just if I bridged far enough, I could eventually get there, but I doubt that's it. There's also another can here. Join them? No, I cannot lay by my canned friend. Well, this is certainly odd. How about I make my way back to the captain's quarters? Because at least now I have enough. Actually, I have 15 out of 15, so this is all I can collect. Hold up, there's a signal over there. Yeah, but there's also this nearby worm. I want to see more about it. Whoa, actually, there's a lot of worms. Whoa, hold up. Hold up. I'm learning a lot right now. What if I come in from this way? Oh, I found its bridge in. I see where the game wants me to go, but it's not where I want to go. The bit. Wait, how do I get to controlling the tan worm now? What the hell? Oh, if I press X, I can swap between the starts. Wait, does that mean they can work together? Like I push this up here and then swap? No, it won't let me swap now. What if I try to swap now? Okay, hold on, hold on. That means, theoretically, I can wrap around. The bridges don't line up. Actually, they do line up. I'm just a little shy. If I push this up one more, it doesn't go in, and it should let me connect the bridges now. No, they still don't line up. Well, I might be able to get... No, so close. Back it up. I can push it over like that, but then I can't fast travel because I'm not connected by bridge. And any further it goes in. I don't want it to go in. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Screw that signal. Let's see what I've unlocked here. Because from this room, I can maybe jump ahead to an area that I probably wasn't able to get to previously. Or probably something that's way outside my pay grade. Find out what it is next time. It turns out this game is in fact open world. So thank you all for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. This game is unbelievably cool. So I'll see you on the next episode. Have a wonderful day and peace.